Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The geneticist John Hardy from UCL finds himself a couple of million pounds richer today. He was awarded something less well known but considerably more generous than a Nobel Prize. It's called a Breakthrough Prize, funded by a Russian billionaire, sponsors it with a, help, a little bit of help from Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and others. Now, awards were made to several scientists and the awards event appeared to be modelled on the Oscars Good rather day. than the, the Nobels, black tie, not white coats. Uh, here's John Hardy uh, and others having collected their prizes. Lots of showbiz, lots of glitz. The whole thing appears designed to bring glamour to science to make celebs out of the scientists. Has to be said that celeb, that's not a label one would think fits Professor Hardy very well. He's generally seen as more substance than style. And I'm happy to say he joins us now from California. Good evening to you. Um, John Hardy, how did you find the ceremony? Not the sort of thing you're accustomed to, I'd imagine. No, but uh, it was great, actually. Of course, it was wonderful. And, uh, you know, I really appreciated it. Maybe I could get used to it. Right. But look, we do think of scientists as not worrying about how they dress and how they look, just worried about the substance, not the style. Do you want science to have more glitz, for goodness sake? I think that people... I think it's good that scientists are held in you know, more esteem and so on. I think that's a very good thing. Not me personally, of course, and uh, anyone who knows me knows me. I'm not, knows that I'm not famous for my dress sense. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think there is a good thing for science, to, it, science itself to be uh, made more glamorous, perhaps, for sure I do. Yeah. Um, tell us a little about what it is you won the prize for. Uh, it's a series of things to do with uh, dementias, really. Uh, we found in the early 1990s in Alzheimer's disease mutations in the amyloid gene. Amyloid is the protein which is deposited in Alzheimer's disease, and so that led us to suggest that amyloid was the essence of the start of the disease. Then later we found other genetic causes which fitted with that process, with the process starting from amyloid and going through other things to cell death and then to uh, dementia and so on. So it, it allowed us to map out a pathway to disease. And what we, of course, hope is that this pathway to disease will be something we can intervene in and stop the disease process. That's, of course, the purpose of the work. Yeah. Well, it's great to ha have it acknowledged, obviously. And you won, it's, it's about two million pounds, but you have to pay tax on that, don't you? So how much do you actually get out at the end of all of that? I don't know exactly, but something well over, um, something considerably over a million pounds. And of course, it's an amazing, of course, that's amazing. Yeah. Of course it is. What are you going to do with the money? Is it one of these ones where you're obliged to give it back to science and do that? Or do, is, are you allowed to buy a two bedroom flat in Camden with it? That's right. I am allowed to buy a two bedroom flat in Camden. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to use some of it to, um, we're trying to build a new institute of neurology building and a dementia institute there. Uh, so I'm going to put some to try and uh, push that fundraising for that new building along. But yes, I am going to buy uh, a, a, a little house uh, in London. That's exactly what yeah, I'm going it doesn't, to do. It doesn't go very far, that kind of money, if you want to buy a house in London. But look, this, this kind of thing is not a substitute for serious science funding, presumably. No, it isn't. But I think it's very important that uh, the public realise what science is about. And indirectly, I think that that helps uh, science funding. In, you know, I think it's very important as scientists we explain what we're doing. And, you know, that's a virtuous circle. If we explain what we're doing to the public, the public put pressure on the politicians and science funding increases. So it's a, if we can get into a virtuous circle for science funding, that's a great outcome. Yeah. And you've worked in the, you work in the UK. You've also have worked in the United States. I just wonder, in, in three sentences, which of those do you think is now a better environment for scientists to discover things in? You know, America is, has had consistently good funding, consistently good funding, which hasn't been the case in the UK. It goes up and down with political will. 
One thing, though, that we have in the UK that they don't have in the US, which is immensely powerful, and for example at the Institute of Neurology is very important, is we have the NHS and the, 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 the single unitary NHS behind us, which makes clinical research so much better in the UK than it is in the US. So some things are easier John. in the US, but much research is better in the UK. John, well done. Thanks very much for joining us.